Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 132, looking ahead to where you want to be. So as you know, all month, it's been about how to practice self-care around the holidays with yourself and everyone else. Last week, we did a looking back and reflecting on what work you've been doing on yourself this past year, and to give you a clear picture of your progress and your struggles. Well, today, let's finish out this year by looking ahead at what you want to start or continue working on to fulfill your goals. Now, this isn't going to be a lofty, idealistic episode about all your wonderful New Year's resolutions. I think it's going to be about let's get down to reality about what you want and why and how is this reality possible. Before we get into it, I really just want to say thank you to all of you who have reached out and let me know how helpful the podcast has been this year and how the messages that you're getting from it are what you needed to hear in the moment and they're making you think. My coaching clients are letting me know that it helps them to continue the work outside of our coaching sessions to really deepen their understanding of what's healthy and what's not and what they're working on specifically in the moment. So thank you so much for the feedback, because that is why we're doing the show to help you help yourself. Okay, so let's think about what do you want your life to look like in the years ahead? in the next three to five years, let's say. What are you looking forward to? What comes into your mind when I ask you that? What are you looking forward to working on, doing, making better? What I talk to clients about all the time is, and you may not be looking forward to doing the hard boundary work or the old trauma work or correcting old habits, but you certainly are looking forward to having what is on the other side of that stuff. Healthier relationships, better confidence, being more relaxed, being happier, having your life feel like it's more in alignment with who you really are, that kind of thing. So what are you looking forward to? And you can look short term and longer term and both. I think that's kind of healthy. Second, What plan do you have for more growth or new growth? You're just starting out with this stuff in the coming year. So for 2022, do you have in mind what you're thinking about? Either continuing to work on or diving into in the coming year. If it feels too wide open and vague, that's okay. These questions get us thinking and get us started. So wherever you are in the process is fine. Don't worry about it. What matters is that you want to feel better. And you want your life to feel better. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to think about all of what I just asked you, what you're looking forward to, what your vision is for yourself. And then we're going to go through some tough questions to get you thinking to get you checking into where you are around things. These are tough questions. Don't let them be discouraging. I want you to look at them as lovingly challenging to get you on the right track. And let's stop here for a moment. We all want our cake and eat it too. We want really good things for our life. And yet we don't want to hear that it's going to be hard or it's going to cost money or it's going to take longer than you want it to even though deep down we know better. We know anything good is bought and paid for. Anything good is worked for and earned, and it's the journey of earning that, challenging yourself, changing yourself, 
becoming more open to new and better things, feeling differently, that's the wonderful part is the journey. Yet our anxiety can make us want the outcome right away. Okay, so some of these questions might be tough, but I just want you to write them down if you can. If not, replay the episode later and just be in the moment with us now and think about what comes up when I ask these. I believe that whatever comes up when I ask these questions today are what's supposed to come up for you. And that's all you need to know. Okay, so thinking about what you want for this coming year and in the next few years, is this thing, or maybe it's a few things, in alignment with your values and your vision? So if you haven't done some values work, go back to earlier episodes on values, do some of those, go online, download the list, figure out what matters most to you and why. When you feel like you have your values down in a good enough place, there's no perfect then you can look and see if what you want to change this year, aspire to this year, work on this year, is that in alignment with what matters most to you? Or is it what other people said maybe you should do? Okay, so I want you to take a look at that. I do know that working with clients for a long time, if it's not in alignment with your values, it's probably not going to last long or end well. So that's why I'm asking that question first. And does it align with your vision, your vision of what you really want? Does it match? Alignment is so important. We talk about it all the time here on the show because how can you feel centered and grounded if your insides don't match your outsides? Or if there are disconnected things in your life, disconnected meaning, They don't really add up to the rest of you. Very common example is you take a confident, successful person at work, but then when you sit with them, their relationships, their personal relationships are a mess. And they've done all this work on themselves to get further along in their life, and yet there's work to do in their personal relationships so that those are congruent, those are healthy enough. Like they have relationships with peers who challenge them now. That they're not settling for hanging out with people personally that really just don't match them anymore. So alignment, looking for that, that's important. Don't worry about having all the answers to that today. It's just something really interesting to keep our eye on as we go through the process. Okay, next question. What is standing in your way? You're like, why did you bring up that question as number two, Mary? I think it's because if there wasn't stuff standing in our way, we probably would be there already. So we want to get really honest. First about what we want, and then, okay, what's in the way for you? Now there's a million different things that could get in our way. Some are within our control to change or ignore, (laughs) and some aren't. Some are very real, and that's okay. And it's up to you to discern, is this right timing, or am I avoiding and procrastinating? The biggest one typically are people, and that people includes you getting in your own way. And we'll talk more about that later. But what about people? Are you afraid of what their reaction might be if you make changes? Have you received definite disapproval or anger or resentment or hurt or fear or controlling behavior from people in your life because you're already starting to make changes or at least talking about them? So is there resistance there? And who are these people? Because every relationship we have is different. If you have a partner, if you're married or whatever, you may have some obligations to them. I get it. You know, maybe you have to pay half the mortgage. So changing your career and not making your money for a while will impact them. So you would have to negotiate that, of course. Other people who aren't going to be directly impacted by your changes, consider carefully how much weight you give their opinion. And you also have to think of the source. 
do they let themselves go after goals or do they have a lot of self-limiting beliefs and behaviors, that kind of thing. The next obstacle, you could feel like it's an obstacle, is not having enough time. There's two things I want to say about this because plenty has been said already by other people many times. It's our perception of time and it's how we prioritize time. So you would have to look at the boundaries around your time and energy. What are your priorities? And what are you willing to give up, let's say, to create your side hustle or to go back to school while you're working full time? And is it worth it to do it right now? Is the timing okay now? So you have to figure that out for yourself. Or is it you don't have time, quote unquote, but you watch a lot of Netflix and you do a lot of things for other people that maybe they should do for themselves, right? Like, are you giving yourself enough time? When we prioritize something, we make it happen because we make time for it. Or we allow time for it. So thinking about your perception of your time spent and how are you spending your time and is it efficient? And is there enough for you the other one, the obvious one is money. We never have enough money or it can feel that way. It is our fear that we don't have enough money to do A, B, and C. And I want you to think about that. How real is that? And if it is real, let's say it's real and your budget's tight. What would you do about it if you had to? Like you had to come up with the money to go back to school, let's say, or take a pay cut to have a better job that you really love kind of thing. How would you come up with that money? What would you eBay? What would you yard sale? What would you not spend discretionary funds on that kind of thing? So how is money or lack thereof standing in your way? And the final one support. And this could be a real one. Maybe you don't have enough healthy support around you. Or maybe you do and you haven't accessed it because that's really vulnerable. You know, I talk to so many clients who have great friends, you know, great in terms of working on themselves, would really support some great things for you, want you to be happy, want you to take a risk, have the courage to stand by you. But it's so vulnerable to ask them that a lot of people don't. So I want you to think of what your healthy support is. If unfortunately you don't, have people organically already in your life, then you're going to need to go get some. You're going to need a coach and you're going to need other people, a support group, something. You hear me talk about it all the time. It is so important to have that healthy support. All right, so those are some obstacles that hopefully you just got honest or you're going to get honest this week and really give some thought and some feeling to and see where you are. Okay, ready for the next challenging question? Okay, what will happen if you don't make these changes that you want to make? That you don't move towards those goals? That you don't make that dream real? Now, what you think of actual consequences like we've mentioned before here on the show? Like the ones to your health, let's say, if you don't work on eating better and working out. Even your stress level in your current job, let's say, or your current toxic relationship, that impacts our health. And the older we get, the less we get to ignore it. What about the consequences to your relationships? All of them, your kids, your partner, your family, your friends, your coworkers. If you don't make these changes. Now, we're not responsible for them, remember, but we are responsible for our part in our relationships. And we're the only ones who can take good care of us. They can't do that. And what about your finances? What if you don't get, let's say, more organized financially, or go out there and make more money or ask for that raise? Or change your career to make more money, whatever it is. So there are often actual consequences that maybe we don't want to look at if we don't make these changes. I'm not talking about using guilt. I'm talking about using reality when you are making decisions around whether to do this work or not. Tied into that is, what will your regrets be a few years from now? 
if you don't do this. And don't sugarcoat and don't rationalize. Get real. What are you really going to regret and why? How else will you feel if you don't do the work? Like defeated, disappointed, frustrated with where you still are? Will you still feel stuck? My experience over the years is those feelings don't go away, guys. They get worse. And the longer the time goes, the worse you feel. And then the less time you have ahead, perhaps, to make it right. And my older clients talk about that all the time. They don't have 50 years spread up in front of them to kick the can and say, oh, I'll do that someday. Because someday is here. Okay. Next question. So are you just hoping you'll do this or are you really ready, do you think? I know, I know that's smart ass, but no, it's actually really real. Because I believe we're really ready when we're ready and not a moment before. You've heard me say that. And there are probably a lot of reasons. But are you really ready? And that's important. You want to ask yourself, are you still holding on to some old limiting beliefs about yourself that maybe you don't want to admit to? A real hard one to look at for us is, ooh, maybe we're not mature enough to not sabotage big changes we want to make. It's like, can I handle that? Can I handle becoming a new person? That's a big thing. We always think about things we want to change and how we want to feel on the other side, but we forget it's a package deal. New other things are going to have to change in our life too. We're going to have to act differently, operate differently, look at our life and relationships differently. We're going to want that alignment we talked about a little while ago. So are we mature enough to really embrace that? Or are we so afraid of the unknown? Are we so afraid we're not going to do it right? And are we still what I call miserably comfortable where we are? Miserably comfortable. It's not bad enough to really do anything yet. So are you just hoping you'll do this or are you really ready? The next one is, what is your intuition saying? Like what feels right? What are you quietly but strongly just knowing right now? Even if it feels general or vague and you don't have details yet, that's okay. Trust in your gut, not your anxiety. Not other people's anxiety. You know the way to do this is try to spend more and more time in the quiet. Notice the immediate feeling before the fears and the shoulds hit you up. The imposter syndrome lies, all that stuff. What is your intuition saying? What do you keep feeling drawn to, even if you don't know why, even if it doesn't make sense right now? I want you to take note of that. Next one, who else gets hurt if you don't make these changes? We talked earlier about consequences in our relationships. But when you don't choose to grow, you can have some unhealthy relational patterns that will not only affect you, but those you care about. And that's will, it's not might. Like if you have poor boundaries in a relationship, then there's going to be lots of conflict and low trust and everything else you try to build in that relationship is going to crumble because there's no trust for it to stand on. Or if you don't work on your control issues, you'll continue to stress out your kids and your partner and your sister and your coworkers and your neighbors and yourself. How are you going to have self-confidence if you are going against yourself and not doing the thing or things that you said you really wanted and needed to do to feel good about yourself. So you do get hurt by this. But you are the only one who can determine how and why and how much. Okay, the next one's kind of smart alecky. What do you do to make sure you won't meet your goals? Doesn't that sound terrible? But we need to look at this. And what I mean by that is what are ways that you might be secretly sabotaging things. Like you're not conscious of it half the time, and you certainly wouldn't admit to it if someone called you out. 
But even the little ways we don't think matter really add up, such as, for example, staying on the phone, solving friends' problems instead of making time to work out, or do your side hustle, or practice self-care. Maybe you're not doing the prep work to eat better and not making time to exercise. You just revert back to old behaviors, which we will. Our brain will revert back to automated, habituated behaviors that we know. So we have to be really vigilant in the beginning to not sabotage that. We got to make it possible. That's the boundary work. Go back five dominoes and say, what's domino number one? that makes domino number two possible. Another way we can do this and rationalize it in all sorts of ways is not saying no to incoming requests from work and other people in your life. So now you simply, oops, don't have time to go back to school, pursue your passion, work on your health, that kind of thing. So are there ways that you are secretly sabotaging or not willing to look at some of the details that really can impact you reaching your goal or not? I think it's so easy, like we've talked about here, to get caught up in thinking, oh, it's the grand gestures. I have to save 10 grand first, or I have to do this. No, you save 10 grand by saving a little bit each week or by not spending. You get healthier each day, a little bit at a time. So those little bits are what I want to focus on here when you think about sabotaging, because that's where it's going to happen. I mean, yes, we can sabotage the big opportunity, blow the interview, things like that. But more often than not, it's the footwork that we're not disciplined enough to do because maybe we're not serious enough. So those are some really tough questions to get you set straight on where you truly are right now versus where you want to be. Because if we want to make it real, we have to get real. And real can be very possible. I just want to do it in reality and not lie to ourselves and not sit there and wonder why things aren't getting better. There are usually valid reasons why not. And it's so helpful when we can take a moment and stop and figure that out. I think that's actually empowering. So yeah, those questions were tough, but they'll build your confidence as you answer them honestly and then take care of what you need to take care of around them. Okay, so making it happen. So how do we move forward realistically this year and making it possible? First, and my clients hear this all the time, the first thing you want to do is look at what next step is sitting on your radar now and has been or keeps popping up even though you push it away. What is it? Even if it seems so inconsequential and small, I want you to note that and start there. It's probably not glamorous. It's probably pretty damn basic, but that's where we're all supposed to start then just trust that it's next. It's the next thing to do. It is, because once that is taken care of, it's going to go off your radar and the next thing will pop up, I promise. I mean, yes, you want to have a sense of direction in general, but know that more information is coming after you experience this first thing anyway. It's going to show you stuff. It often will lead you to the very next thing. Okay, so what is on your radar? Start where you are. Start what you can see yourself doing because that is going to get you to the next thing you need to do. And every time you take a step like that, it's going to empower you and make it more real and plausible that you can do this. Second, look at and maybe even write down the evidence of why you can do this. Okay, we've been talking about this, like what you've already done. What have you already done so far? And why is then the next step just the natural next step? If you sit there and think about it, it'll show itself to you. Like for example, maybe you've worked on self-love all this year. So of course, organically, now you're gonna to wanna to look at your unhealthy relationships that you might need to change because staying around unhealthy people 
isn't very loving towards yourself. You're going to want better. You're going to need better. So growth always begets growth. It's okay. If you can do this, you can do that. And I just don't think it would show up in your radar if it wasn't meant to be there. I just don't believe that. I've never seen that happen for someone. Third, have accountability and a derailment plan. Let the good people know what you're doing and ask them to gently hold you accountable to you, what you say you want. So you're not doing this in a vacuum and you're not doing it in isolation. Then I want you to have a plan, just a loose plan of how you're going to get that train back on the tracks. Like, what are you going to do? Like, I want you to envision the way back with, yes, some disappointment, but I don't want you to do any shame or guilt. That's useless. Doesn't get us anywhere. All right, so take a moment. We're going to do this right now before we close up for the year. If you're able to sit somewhere and close your eyes right now, that's great. But if not, I just want you to kind of picture in your mind's eye and kind of focus on how it feels. What matters is that later you can recall this visualization and practice it until it becomes as if it's already happened and you're doing well. All right, so... First, I want you to envision yourself making progress with the changes you want to make. Try to be specific, have some details there. Maybe just pick one thing that you're working on so you don't get overwhelmed right now. And see yourself feeling good about the headway that you're making. Like maybe you see yourself setting boundaries loving yourself more, being more assertive, or being more disciplined, perhaps taking a risk like a new job or career, maybe leaving a toxic environment, putting your gifts out there, that sort of thing. Okay, and that feels really good. But now I want you to see things going awry for a moment. Not tragic. Just maybe some temporary frustrations or setbacks, like getting off track, maybe feeling self-doubt, monkey wrenches into your plans. Okay, now stop here and breathe. Get grounded. Vision what you're doing to get things back on track. Like maybe you're getting up earlier to make sure you get that run in. Maybe you're asking for help when you get stuck. Maybe you see yourself even more determined, because now you're pissed, <laughs> to problem solve, which is not a bad thing. All right, now you're back on track, and you're better for it. Think about why for a moment. Was that a test to see, were you ready? Were you determined? Were you resilient when it got hard? Do you really want this, in other words? And then maybe even were there better detours that became a shortcut instead? Take in all the good feelings you have about getting it back together. Maybe you're feeling even more determined now. More solid about your why, like why you're doing this. That you really want this. And that you're committed to seeing it through. It almost got taken away from you. And now you said, no, I really want that. You feel proud and confident. And even stronger now that you know you have experience bringing it back on track. And that is very, very important. This is reality testing your goals. It's looking at your problem solving skills and your commitment to see it through knowing that every good thing we usually work for can be hard. This is the evidence that tells your subconscious that this isn't an unrealistic fantasy. It's real. It's been road tested. So it's going to put up less resistance as you move forward. Because remember, your subconscious is there to keep you safe and make you happy. So try to use that visualization over and over again. See what it reveals to you. And practice it, again, till it becomes 
real in your mind's eye. Okay. So today we took a look ahead to the coming year and the years after. And we talked about what you want for yourself. We asked some really hard questions, but ones that are important to flesh out the details and reality test your vision. We talked about ways to truly get started with an evidence-based approach that works. Know that the more real your goals are and the more bought and paid for, I think the more precious and profound your growth is going to feel. So here's to a new year and to a new you. Thank you so much for joining me today and joining me this past year. May you stay healthy and grounded and hold on to that hope. Love yourself into the coming year. Be sure to check the show notes at ownitpowercast.com. Sign up for the newsletter each Tuesday and follow me on Instagram for all the latest. All right, so pay it forward. Keep focusing on you and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now so you can really own it later.